Especially that thing on gifts at work. <laughs> past that we've gone through guys they're honoring that firefighter get in here <laughs> we made this awesome thing for the show and she's like get in it's it cold it's good cold. cold we want it hot <laughs> this is my new addition to our little handbag and apron business. This was the only machine that mom had left here in America. And I asked dad for it and he let me have it. And I will never ever get rid of this. No matter when it, no matter if it gets old and broken, I'll never get rid of it. I don't know why this light's flickering. You think mom's talking to us through this light? Maybe it's more cold. Anybody who watches my stuff that knows Morse code, you think my mom's talking to me through this light? Joe, do you know how to thread it? I was watching something. Could watch that thing over there. Do you know how to make it move? The machine? Yeah, but... Um, you made it move? Did it sew at all? No. It didn't sew? It just sew. <clears throat> well, Joe's just learning it, and I have no doubt that he'll learn it. We don't have the manual, so he's looking at the YouTubes. I need to get a bin for all my scissors that I have now. I need to claim back my dinner table in time for Christmas. <laughs> Look at this. Her thread thing. I don't know if I want that on my wall though. This is going to stop looking like a dining room and start looking like a sewing room in a little while. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to start going to bed a little bit earlier because I crawled into bed at about 12.30 last night and then fall asleep till about 1 o'clock and I knew that I had to get up early to go down to my dad today. Why we went early? Because of Jory. We needed his truck today to move what we are going to go move and Jory is the kind of person that gets stuff done early because he goes to bed early. So he was up like about 5 o'clock in the morning asking if it was time to go yet. I'm like, we told grandpa we're going to get there like 8 or after 8. So we got there at 
Jory's sole purpose was to pick up this workout bench that my dad was giving back to him. We owned the bench before, but we gave it to my mom years ago because we weren't using it. My mom was going to send it to Belize, and then she never did. So it's sitting in the yard getting weather-worn. So my dad told Jory he can have it back. So Jory was excited to go get that. And then by the same time, I asked my dad if I could have the one sewing machine that my mom left here in America because she sent all the rest home to Belize. And of course, he checked with my siblings first and they didn't want it. And so it's mine. And my dad asked me to never get rid of it. And he has my solemn vow that I will never part with that machine, no matter how old and ratty it gets, because that's the one thing that my mom loved that she left behind. So hopefully Joe can get it going and we can start making more of these handbags because right now the handbags are being made from cloth, but eventually I want to do it with leather and, you know, stiffer materials and you're know, like a real purse purse, you know, I want to get into the purse game. I love purses. <laughs> So anyways, um, on the way home, did you guys see all those firefighters on the overhead, on the overpass, uh, waiting to honor the body when it goes by? It must have been about 30 miles of firefighters on the overpass. It was so sad to see, yet it just warmed my heart. What a brethren that group is. I love firefighters. I have a soft spot in my heart for firefighters. My dad was a volunteer firefighter when we were in Belize growing up. I guess maybe that started my love of firefighters, but I really respect what they do, and it hurts my heart whenever I hear that any of them got killed. It hurts my heart, too, when I hear a cop got killed, but I think I kind of wait to hear the story if he was mean or what, <laughs> and, you know, was he being abusive to the person, you know, that killed him or whatever, you know, and if they were, like, protecting that person or whatever, then it, it kind of hurts my heart. But, I mean, if I'm to be honest, but when I hear about firefighters getting hurt or getting killed, I silently weep because they're the only people that I know that will run into a building when everybody else is running out. I mean, come on. So, and this firefighter was young, so I'm just going to keep his family lifted up in prayers, you know? Thank you guys, by the way, whoever is praying for Sam and his dad. Uh, Sam's dad is sick in the hospital, and it's really touch and go, and, and Sam really needed prayer, and he reached out to me. So, I, I figured the best way is to just post it. At a, um, as a post on my latest vlog that I uploaded last night. I hope you guys saw it and I hope you guys are praying, okay? Do you guys hear the wind still going outside? So I've reached out to Sherry to ask her for her new address because the address that we went to in July, she has since moved from that place and I knew she was going to move so that's why I didn't send anything to that old address but if she could send me a P.O. box, anything, I really want to send her out a box, I want to send her an apron, I want to send her a bag or two and just a sweet card just thanking Sherry for being in my life. So I reached out to her the first time but she was running from a fire, she was packing up to evacuate, evac evacuate, evacuate so I knew that she was busy. So I reached out again today, and if I don't get a response from her, I'm going to go to her um, Instagram privately to say, hey, did you change your phone number? Because she still has like a New York uh, phone number. So we'll see, you know, she's just busy. But she was on Instagram Live, and I went into her room, and I was chatting with her for a bit. And I don't bring up stuff like that in public, because I know Sherry now. I'm going to go privately with that type of stuff. But I just jumped in and say, hey, Sherry, how's it going? And she said hello to me, and she asked me how I was doing, and she told me she was vegan now, and I told her, don't worry, I got you covered with vegan dishes whenever you want to come back. I've got at least 25 vegan dishes at my site, right? I got to go count. And she's like, you, Barb? I'm like, I sure do. And I said, I'm vegan only for three weeks in January, girl. And I might be vegan for breakfast and for lunch, but I'm not vegan for dinner. You know, I don't like when people knock things that people are trying. For instance, for me, I would never go vegan. And honestly, if I can, you know, tell you the truth, I get a little bit sad when I hear that people are vegan, only because it's so limiting for what I can offer them in the way of some good food, you know what I mean? But I'm not going to go tell them don't be vegan because, personally, I would never ever be vegan because I've discussed it with my health provider, which is Joe from the health food store, and um, he knows all my health issues, and I asked him, there's something ringing, let me make sure it's not my ear, Joe, is that machine ringing? Huh? Is the machine ringing? I hear a ringing in my ear. I want to make sure it's not my ear. No. I heard, did you guys hear that? A high-pitched ringing just now? Maybe the camera picked it up. Sometimes it's my ear that's ringing, and that means I'm going to get dizzy. Like okay, but I didn't eat anything that would make me dizzy, so... Anyway, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, when I went to the party that the city had on Thursday night, I had to come home and take a water pill because a lot of that stuff had MSG. The chili had MSG and the um, hot chocolate had MSG. So I had to come take a water pill, but I was better by the next day because I had stuff to do that day. Um, anyways, um, 
Yeah, so I would never tell anybody not to be vegan, but my Joe told me that me, Barbara, personally should not be vegan because the only way to get in healthy protein when you're eliminating meat is through tofu. Tofu is soy, and so he advised me not to take any soy in because of the fact that I have these fiber cystic things in my breast and they flare up from time to time with you know getting inflamed and stuff. And um, I, the, the soy is not good for people in that situation. So I personally would never do it, but if you're doing it, I'm not gonna knock you. The same way I feel about network marketing. You know, if you're doing network marketing because I've been burned by network marketing in the past, I'm not gonna knock you because you're doing it, but I definitely don't wanna do it and I get really like, I don't know if the word's annoyed, but I get some type of way when people approach me with it because I'm very polite when I tell them, no, no thank you, I don't really wanna do that, you know, but good luck, I, I really wish you well in it and they start giving you every reason under the sun why, you know, and don't you wanna be in independent, don't you wanna change your money situation? I'm like, oh my God, that starts, that really takes me off when they start doing that because network marketing, um, I don't know what people do to get successful in it, but I know I've never been able to be successful and all it does is eat out my money because half the stuff that they're selling I can't afford. So um, I don't know why I went into network marketing, but I'm just saying that I don't knock people's thing that they're trying. When I went grain free, you guys didn't knock it. One or two people told me it wouldn't last, but that's okay. It lasted for about six months. And it's something that I would try again to go grain free again because I did feel way better when I was non grains. Likewise, I felt really good when I'm doing the. I feel really good when I'm doing the Daniel fast. So I'm looking forward to that in January. I'm not doing it with no church, but I'm gonna do it by myself because I'm looking forward to my black bean burgers, guys. That stuff is so good. So um, yeah. A lot of people were telling Sherry in the room, you shouldn't be vegan because that's going to sicken you. I'm like, no, Sherry knows what she's doing. Don't you think if she starts feeling bad, she's going to stop? You know, I've seen some vegan people around me, though, where their skin looks like leather and they look bad. They need to stop. You know, so, but in any case, I support what people are doing. And I hope she gets back to me with an address so I can mail her, her out her little gift package. She was kind of distracted today again, though, when she got off her live because she was live at Instagram because the train she was on coming back from Carlsbad, I think that's California, I don't know geography, but she was on her way back to her home and the train hit somebody. And so they had to stop the train to get out the dead body and investigate, and that's why she was live. So she was kind of distracted. But if I don't get an address in the next few days, I'm going to her Instagrams, okay? <laughs> I'm going to start trying to go live different places like maybe Facebook, Instagram, and not just on YouTube, but YouTube every Tuesday at 6.15. So I think I've covered everything for today. I really need to get off this thing so I can start editing the video for the cooking channel because let me tell you, I did a video for the cooking channel, you guys. Oh, I poked my finger with a needle and it bled. One of the little pins that you pin the cloth with, I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, a lot of blood. So anyways, um, what was I gonna say? I forgot already. See how my mind works? Oh, about the show. I did a dish for the show. The dish was the bomb.com. Let me tell you, it was loaded fries. It's making the rounds. They have all types of loaded fries. I chose to do the fajita loaded fries because of the fact that I love fajitas. Okay? So it was fantastic, but I don't know how the show came out because I had a lot of interruptions. At one point, uh, Leah's husband, uh, Kevin, showed up with Colin to bring me a big old box of goodies from the church. Every year, the church gives away five boxes. Uh, for Thanksgiving and five boxes for Christmas to needy families. So my friend Leah knows that we always need food because we self-employed. So she sent one over here. I haven't been to any church since Christmas Day. I'll be honest with you, not the church I used to go to, not Leah's church. I didn't quit going to Leah's church off of any specific reason. I just got sick and tired of going to church. And honestly, it's because I, I'm, I'm still mad that Trump got in. Honestly, I'm not mad at God, but I'm like, I'm done. I need a break. I can't sit with people who are praying for Donald Trump to succeed because the other church, not, I don't know about Leah's church, but the other church, the pastor is constantly talking about, you, the Lord says you're supposed to pray for those who are in authority above you because he appoints them for one reason. I said, please give me a break. Like I got into a little, um, not really an argument, but a debate back and forth in my last life with somebody who came in and said, God is in control. You all know I hate that, right? 
God is not in control because he gave us free will. And don't come back with an answer saying, well, he allows things to happen. Because no, he don't. He sets up the consequences of our actions, good or bad. So if you do bad, there's a list of things that will come back on you. Those are seeds that you're planting and you get that harvest. If you do good, there's a bunch of stuff that's going to come back to you. That's your harvest too. And so that's what God controls is the consequences of our actions. Now, when God will take control over our situation is when we give him control. And a lot of the times we don't. I know I'll give God control over something. And when I think he's taking too long, like a couple of hours, I give him like a couple of hours. I'll say, give me that. You, you're too slow. Let me fix this. You know, that's kind of like we, what our kids do with us, right? You know, they'll give you something to fix and you can't figure it out. And they give me that. I'll fix it. I'll fix it myself. You know, that's kind of like the way I am with God sometimes. And he knows it because he made me this way. So, um, yeah, I don't believe God put Donald Trump in. I don't think he's appointed. I think Putin put him in. And if you want to, you know, pray for the people that God put in authority over you, then I guess you have to pray for Putin because he's an authority over us right now. And, um, yeah, I can't line up with that. I can't, I mean, let's say if I get abducted, that person is in, is in authority over me, right? So then based on what they're telling me, then God put that person in control over me for some reason, right? So then I should pray for that person. Oh, hell to the no, I'll be planning out that person's death, you know, so I can escape. So that's my thing. I get really, really worked up and I get like, I start doing this like seizure, you know, when they start preaching all that crap. And, and to be quite honest... I'm sick and tired of going to churches, not Leah's church, Leah's church. When I'm talking about churches, I'm talking the church I used to attend, not Leah's church. I'm sick and tired of churches and the way they bash gay people. I can't take it anymore. I said before in my vlog that I think that it's very unsexy. And I'll change that word and say, I think it's very, very vicious and hateful for them to do that. I love everybody equally. And I can't line up with gay bashing. I just can't. I have too many gay people in my life that I love dearly and I would defend them with my life. I'm saying, I'm saying, so I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't like for, uh, for them to be called an abomination and they say abomination because of President Obama because he signed for same-sex marriage to pass. And I, I, I feel like a hypocrite when I sit in those church pews knowing all the people that I have in my life that I love dearly and I know that I would not want to invite them to come with me to that church. You know, and they're constantly having family day where you invite people to come. And there's no one that I would want to invite to take to that church because it's too dogmatic in their beliefs. And they leave room for nothing else except what they believe. They're kind of like Megan McCain on The View. McCain's daughter, she leaves nothing else for what other people believe. Ex um, other people believe. And all she believes is what she believes. And she believes she's right. And I can't deal with people like I could never be that girl's friend. I got a Sunday evening miracle from mom. You guys know I got the machine today, right? Open the bag that daddy gave me. For you guys that were in the live on Friday, hearing that I was wanting fabric from Belize. It has Belize design and the word Belize and stuff in it. Look, this was in the bag. Mommy had these. I don't know what she was going to make with this. Shirts or something? What do you say? You better believe it. You better believe it. This and is one. This one just says Belize down here. It's three yards by almost 60 wide. We're and in the way. fabric material that I buy for... Fabric material. Isn't fabric and material the same thing? Yes. The fabric <laughs> that I buy for the apron is only 45 wide. The, the stuff for the interfacer thing that we need for the purse is 20 wide. Bunch of crooks. So, uh, anywho, Belize again. Look, Belize again. That's my washer. Okay, it's going crazy. The heart of nature. Uh-huh. And there's what? Four pieces, right, Jay? Yes. Four pieces. Jay, I want a skirt out of one of them. We're going to make some aprons out of these if we can. And they're only going to go to spray. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my washing machine, guys. Look, Belize, I want one out of this one. Yeah, this one's nice. It's pretty. This one just says you better believe cool. it again. I want it's the yellow cool. one. Do you know what? The yellow one. This one? See? You guys, you better believe it there, Jay. This one's pretty. This is a Christmas miracle from my mom. This is just God showing that he hears me. So whatever... Let me lock that door. Hold on. Let's look at Jada. Why? Let's look at Daddy. What's he doing? Oh, I guess. When you hear a couple of me, you know what? Mm -hmm. They keep breaking the tread. Okay, ready, Jay? Josh. They keep breaking the tread, It Josh. sounds angry. <clears throat> Whatever it is that you're expecting from God, don't lose faith, okay? Because the year is ending and I was losing faith. Like, God, I have met the person, Joe. I met the person. Joe can be seeing my thing. Copyright. The person I need to meet since July. 
and nothing has come through for me and I know that's the right person but this is my testimony right now it's a small testimony but it is a testimony and the Bible says he who receives his testimony is um, has certified that God is true so God is true all right don't doubt it start dreaming big let me fold my cloth and go into my little happy spot on the couch bye y'all yeah daddy in a kimono Yeah, that's a